Welcome back to Sky News Live in Westminster. Let's return to Brexit and discuss what chance the Prime Minister has of getting his Brexit deal through Parliament tomorrow. Joining me now is former Conservative advisor Stephen Lynch and Zoe Williams, a columnist at The Guardian. Good afternoon uh, to you both. Good afternoon. Stephen, so what's going on inside number 10 at the moment? Hitting the phones hard, stream of MPs being called in for meetings? Yes, lots of frenetic meetings today in number 10. There's really a sense that they can get this through the line, having failed three times under Theresa May. It's desperately disappointing that the DUP have said so far that they're not in a position to support this deal. And I think the key is really going to be um, Labour MPs in the north of England who represent Leave constituencies. Getting them on side is going to be the key. What does Boris Johnson need to do then to get them on side? It's impossible. So... I mean, it wouldn't be an argument that Boris Johnson made for those Labour MPs. It's very much a question of them and, their, and the feeling about their jobs in their northern constituencies. So actually the more important conversation is between them and Jeremy Corbyn. Will he remove the whip if they go with Boris Johnson or won't he? He hasn't he's gonna, said yet. If he he's going to remove yet. the whip from them, then they won't save anything by voting for the deal. So there's no point voting the deal. You know, they won't get those voters because they won't be the prospective so MP. Why wouldn't he say well, he's going to remove the whip? Quite. And that's definitely the conversation that's going on within Labour is really, really putting the pressure on. Certainly John McDonnell and John Landsman, the head of Momentum, and all, most of the shadow cabinet are saying those MPs should lose their jobs. Some of them simply aren't very bright. Some of them are very committed. So Kate Hoey is so committed now to Brexit that there's nothing you could say and she's resigning at the next election anyway. Um, so you're really talking about, you know, your Stephen Kinnock's, your Ronnie Newman's. Are they really committed enough to doing this very strange thing? You know, don't forget, they're propping up and they're, they're pushing through a deal which is significantly harder on the things that they care about, the environmental rights, the workers' rights, the human rights, is significantly harder and it has no solution to Ireland. So it's like Theresa May's deal minus from their position. So is there enough in it for them? And don't forget that the, roughly the same number of Labour MPs said they were going to vote for Theresa May's deal every time, and every time when it came to it, she got four. Mm. I, I Nicola Sturgeon, uh, the SNP leader, has said today that she suspects that quietly Labour wouldn't mind this going through, that they might be saying on the outside, don't vote for it, but just allow those rebels to let this through. Can you see that? I disagree. I think from the Labour leadership's point of view, in opposition, it's in their narrow political interest to vote for whichever option is going to cause the most chaos and discord for the government. So the government are really going to struggle to get the likes of Stephen Kinnock and others over the line here. And lots of Labour MPs like Lisa Nandy is an example of this, have said that they want to respect the referendum result and secondly, they want to avoid a disastrous no deal. Tomorrow, they're going to get a one for opportunity to make one vote to tick both of those boxes. So we'll see if the comments that they've been making for the last three years to avoid the no deal, we'll see if they can follow through. The interesting thing is, this is, this is not a good deal, right? And, and Pete, there will be blame following this deal if it goes through. People will blame it for all kinds of things that shake down afterwards. The hard Brexiters will be saying it's not hard enough and everybody else will be saying, what did we do that for? And there's been a lot of time for? to scrutinise exactly. it, has there? So it's not a good deal. But what's interesting to me is that those t 21 Tories who are kind of technically not, not Tories but might come back on side, Whatever they decide to do, they won't suffer for this. They won't be blamed for it electorally because everybody will understand both decisions. They'd understand their loyalty to the party. They'd understand their um, objections to the deal. Whereas Labour, on the other hand, if those Labour MPs vote with Conservatives, with Boris Johnson, the most hardline Conservative anybody's seen in generations, and actually get this over the line on behalf of the Conservative government, and then it's a disaster afterwards, or it's simply not good enough afterwards, they face huge jeopardy in what that does for them personally, reputationally, and for the party reputationally. He's also trying to persuade some of the hardline Brexiteers who haven't come round yet, isn't he? We've seen Mark Francois uh, in yes. number 10 today. We've seen Sir Bill Cash. John Barron has been talking about potential insurance policy at the end of the transition period, no deal. If he gives to them with one hand, he's taking from the other. 
isn't he? And he needs to get all on board. He needs to get a lot of them on board. This is the ERG's final opportunity to get this over the line. That's what I would be saying to them, to your skeptic minded MPs. We've elected Boris Johnson as the leader. He was the leader of the Vote Leave campaign. This is as good as it gets, this deal. The backstop has been removed. Boris Johnson has been PM for 85 days. He said in the contest that he would be able to remove the backstop. You heard Michel Barnier saying the backstop has been abandoned. So he's been successful in getting a brand new deal and being mm, able to bring it to the 95% of it is Theresa May's deal, isn't it? We can't really describe it as a brand new deal. Oh, yeah. there, are, there are elements in there. Also, there I don't really think we could say the backstop have been abandoned. The backstop has just been technically re-described. But it's not actually a very different deal for the Northern Ireland, other, for the Northern Irish. Otherwise, the DUP would be behind it, which they're not. But David Trimble, who was one of the architects of the Good Friday Agreement, today has endorsed Boris's new deal. He was saying it respects the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement. So the DUP may even split on this issue. So all 10 MPs may not reject it in full. But I find it personally disappointing as somebody who has family in Northern Ireland that they've been unable to support this. But let's also not forget they were one of the people who opposed the Good Friday Agreement well, the all those years I mean, ago. That's, it's interesting you should say that because I heard that the, 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 the Irish commentary this morning said don't forget, the DUP love saying no to things. It's in their DNA. That's what they were set up to do, was to say no. And they've been saying no without accountability ever since. So, actually, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the DUP didn't just keep on saying no forever. The New Deal is a better deal for Northern Ireland. It enhances the principle of consent. Yes, we're firm a simple majority. It's, it's not a veto, though, <coughs> is it? And that, that, according to the DUP, goes against the terms of the Belfast Agreement. And what I would also say is Boris's deal, it strengthens the UK government's hand with being able to negotiate the future relationship. So this level playing field has been taken out of the withdrawal agreement and it's been put into the political declaration, and which is non-binding. And that is, is an issue, Zoe, isn't it, in terms of trust? The Labour MPs have to take him at his word Well, I mean, this. that, and they would be crazy. They would be hurt if I'm rental to take him at his word because the stated intent of him and his kind of the so-called Spartans is to bring us into regulatory alignment with the with US and out of regulatory alignment with the... EU. So to say, oh, I really believe in, you know, social justice, economic quality, um, regulations that protect workers, regulations that protect consumers, but I totally trust Boris Johnson, who seeks, <laughs> you know, a regulatory alignment with Donald Trump and doesn't want one with the EU, is, I mean, it would be such, it would be so daft that they wouldn't be able to do that in good faith. So if they're going to say they're going to do that, then they are explicitly going against you know, their own movement. Zoe, qu just quickly on this, the UK would have the freedom and the control to vary these things. Well, yeah, and I don't no, think no, no, there's the, the, I don't think the, there's demand the, in the country for think, anybody to water down environmental standards. Well, hey, well can I just point out two things? A, a Labour government I'm gonna, could change I'm just going to point out two things. Firstly, you actually don't have very much leverage when your trading partner is much, much larger than you are. Secondly, the actual rights of the UK Parliament to scrutinise and veto trade deals is minuscule, partly because we've been in the EU for 30 years and we've kind of lo we've lost that muscle memory, we've lost a lot of the technical ability to do that. So w within the EU, we have huge power to scrutinise trade deals and object to them. As a UK Parliament, we've got a small amount of power to amend and no power at all to veto. So we would be in totally uncharted territory dealing with regulatory decisions by a swivel-eyed free marketeer. And, you know, anybody in Labour, even on any progressive side, would worry about that. Uh, just quick final thought. If he doesn't get this over the line tomorrow, if he doesn't get enough votes, then what next? I think it's inevitable we then have to go to a general election if this deal goes down. I, I don't want to make any predictions <laughs> so, here. Well, I mean, I think there's the real the real possibility is Kyle Wilson being regener re rejuvenated. So Kyle Wilson, you'll remember, was the amendment that said, have your deal, but as long as we have a final say vote afterwards. I can see that being resurrected. And then what we'd have on... It would be perfect, actually, for both sides, because what you'd have is a referendum which was this deal or remain, rather than the kind of cursed three-way, no deal, a deal or remain. You'd have this deal or remain, and that might actually get some forward momentum. OK. Uh, Stephen, Zoe, thank you both very much indeed.